Cox. Con, con. All right, Shalom. Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Rakak Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to the elect of the nation of Israel. Uh, me and this brother were just uh, fellowshipping through the spirit after watching this movie. Uh, the first purge, of course, is a controversial topic because it goes into uh, martial law. It goes into um, it goes into and this and this may be uh, this may be a, what do they call it? Uh, a, 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 you know, a, a ruiner of the movie if you haven't watched the movie already. You know, but we're just gonna go into a couple of topics um, through the spirit, kind of like an impromptu. Uh, but basically, as an introduction of the plot, you know, uh, if you've seen any of the previous Purge movies before, it goes into how uh, Esau, the so-called white man, and his government have set up uh, something to basically uh, control the population. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the NFFA is the organization that is in uh, uh, power at that time. It's like a government uh, organization. It stands for New Founding Fathers of America. All right, and like I said, their their ultimate goal is uh, pretty much similar to the goal of the elites, you know, establishing a new world order agenda uh, with, uh, with, you know, uh, the, the, the population being um, subdued, so to speak, right? Um, so, you know, that uh, is actually disguised as a, as a social experiment. You know, when you watch the movie, they tell the, they tell the candidates and they tell the people, uh, look, you know, this is for you guys to be able to uh, express your anger, you know, referring to the citizens, all right, and uh, it's actually targeted towards a specific demographic of Jakes, okay? Uh, uh, and Staten Island is, is, uh, is, you know, in New York, is mostly Jake there, you know? And when you, when you watch the movie, uh, the, really all of the inhabitants of that area were, you know, Israelites. And, um, you know, it just goes to show you that how, you know, we're under captivity of our, uh, of our oppressors to this very day, all right? Yeah, con, con. Yeah, when you look at um how it was presented it to them, when they explained how they were going to be um, rewarded for actually um practicing this experiment, and being partakers of the experiment, they um they give them the uh, reward, saying if you do this, we're going to reward you with certain things. And knowing that these Jakes were in poverty, because when you watch the movie in Staten Island, it was mainly aimed at Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And even when you watch it, they considered them being black and brown people. They clearly yeah. said it when he watched the movie. Mm -hmm. So when you put that present or that gift in front of their faces, a lot of them ate it all up, thinking that they was going to get something in return. Right. So they were willing to so forth sell out, right. in a sense, to be able to do that, to express that, ang that anger and so forth. Now, with that being the case, uh, let me see here. I do have one scripture I want to pull out really quick, okay? This is uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. It says, surely oppressors maketh the wise man mad, and this is the key point coming up, and a gift destroyeth the heart, okay? Because they presented that to him as a gift, saying you're going to be rewarded for this, that, and the third. Meantime, the Jakes that was doing it, it was a high probability that they was going to get killed okay. because they were partakers of the purge. So it's like, I'm not going to give you, you know, again, for brothers that haven't seen it, not going to say it too much, but these are just the basics and these are things that we know through the scriptures what Esau is going to try to do to prep us up to be able to receive these things that is going to give us like the mark, for example, and other things they are going to blow it up and make it sound good. They're going to make it look good when all in all is really meant to destroy you. And that gift, when you read it in the scriptures, was really meant to destroy the heart, which we know was the mind. All right, because they're really not gaining anything out of it. You know what I'm saying? They give them a low amount of money and Jake is willing to just do it just for that because they're in poverty. Okay. And you see Esau doing that in a lot of shapes, forms, and fashions. And I can honestly see Esau doing that when he pushes the chip out. Okay. You know? But we can... Um, did, did you have something to say, brother? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, it just goes into the into the time of Jacob's trouble, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and, and uh, you know, uh, what's going to lead to the time of Jacob's trouble is this civil war rioting spirit right. that is in America right now. Right. You know, part of the reason why, uh, you know, they call if you read some news articles, they'll say that it's uh, that this movie was a slap in the face to Donald Trump and this or, or, or a big uh, uh, F you to Donald Trump, basically saying that, you know, Donald Trump's um, rulership here in, uh, in America is going to lead to the downfall of not only this economy, but the entire 
uh, uh, political uh, system, the entire uh, way that people live their lives. They go to work, they come home and they get child support and they do this and do that. All of those things are going to collapse and this place is going to come uh, uh, basically to a, 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 a war, a warlike uh, 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 state. OK, and so um, I want to get this. And I read it for you. OK, yeah. And Daniel Bible shot. Gone. So 24. This is Daniel chapter eight, verse 24. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper in practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Right. Now, spiritually, this can be can be applied to today because we have uh, Esau, the so-called white man in power today. All right. And his and the most high gave him that power. We know that power comes from comes from on high. Whoever's in authority, the Most High sets up whoever is in 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 authority, okay, to basically render judgment upon the earth, and that's what Esau has been doing. He's been destroying uh, uh, pretty much the world, man, in every aspect. He's been polluting the air. He's been destroying the water. He's been killing the animals. He's been killing the uh, the, the 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 righteous uh, uh, nation, okay. And so he, he he's not going to stop until the Most High takes him out of that position. That's right. That's right. And when you um, really just go into physically what's going on, when you read the prophecy in Daniel, the eighth chapter, when you read up, it's going into the, you know, the, the when you read earlier, it's going into the he goat and then it's going into the ram. You know what I'm saying? And when you go into that he goat, it's talking about Greece and that horn is Alexander. Then it talks about how out of it, four notable ones came up and it talks about out of the four, one rose up in power and oppress the, the holy people and going back to it in prophecy that's really talking about Antiochus Epiphanes and what he did to us as a people and when you actually look at what he did mm -hmm. he actually did a purge mm -hmm. you know matter of fact can you pull yep. up that definition of purge Baba Kasha God. you know and what we're equating to through the spirit is really going into what that same energy that Antiochus came with that's the same energy Esau has because when you read it in Ezekiel 35 and we're going to get that here in a second but it talks about how Esau had a perpetual hatred. So he sent certain people in our way like Haman, Antiochus, um, you know, Titus, Vespasian, Domitian, Nero. People came and wanted to destroy us within that same exact energy. And that energy didn't go nowhere. It exists on the planet Earth right now. That's why you see that racial tension taking place. Okay, so that agenda that Haman, Antiochus, mm -hmm. and these other people I just named, that agenda that they had it still applies to this place today. That's why we're going into this move of the purge, because when you watch it, that shows Esau's deep hatred that he has for you and that he's actually willing to try to negotiate with you and tell you. But really, it's meant for your fall. Right. He'll present it as a gift, have it wrapped up, so forth. But it's meant to, it's meant to fail you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But what I was going into pretty much what Antiochus did, he actually committed a purge. Mm -hmm. You know, I was Esau's first purge on Jake. Okay, because what did he do? He went into the land of Jerusalem. He he, he seized it, pillaged it, burnt it, burnt it with fire, knocked down the tabernacle. All right, destroyed it and offered up his gods and started building them, um, you know, offering things to his God and building it up in his own way. Mm -hmm. And forced us to go off and kill a lot of us if we didn't want to follow his ways. Right. And he flushed a lot of us out of that land and purged us. Right. You know, and best believe as the scriptures talking about in Ecclesiastes, that there is nothing new under the sun. We know and we understand that the same thing is going to happen all over again, just on a larger scale, because the scriptures prophesy that to happen. And that's namely what this lesson is going into. And we see things like the Purge and other movies that put those clues out there, of what Esau wants to do to us. And also, too, we see that these devils are watching us, man, because when you watch these Purge movies, you see where they're getting at and they're alluding to the scriptures. But when you watch this first, well, this this recent Purge movie, mm -hmm. but it's the origins of the Purge. Mm -hmm. You clearly see all the symbolism that's in the scriptures and they starting to come out with these things as we're rising up more and speaking out more and our videos are being pushed more on a larger scale. God. So these devils see the agenda. They know what's going to happen. They understand. And their agenda is to put it out there to tell us what they plan on doing. God. All right. Um, Baba Kasha, if you can pull that definition up. God. And then you got it right afterwards. God. This is the definition of purge on etymology explorer. Um, it says uh, the definition, uh, an act of purging, uh, a forcible removal of people. When you when you go into the word purge, it, it means to cleanse. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when something's being purged or gold's being purged, it means to be refined or cleansed. Okay, read that again, Bubba Kishon. Come. The definition says a forcible removal of people from political activity. A forcible removal of people from political activity. And once you watch that movie, that had taken place. It was a forceful removal of people. They were moving. They were killing people off mm -hmm. for their agenda. Right. And they've been doing that when you watch these movies, you know, because they push things like population control. We need to do this. These people are being overcrowded. Mm -hmm. Even when you look at the Georgia Guidestones, they talk about reducing the population to, uh, what, uh, 150 million. Right. When it's 7 billion people on the planet Earth, which is beautiful because 7 represents completion. Mm -hmm. But Esau is willing to go within his own agenda and say, screw what the Lord's talking about and screw what's down here. We want to do our own thing. Okay, right. and when you go into that, even when you go into, you know, the ancient times and ancient Greece, when they had um, pretty much kicked us out of the land and forced us to follow their ways. Mm -hmm. And even when you go into it in 70 AD, that clearly was a purge, right. you know, because we were forced to go into the land of Africa, mm -hmm. even though it was through our prophecy, but it still happened. And Jake was purged. So best believe Esau is using these accounts in ancient history. And they're looking through it, knowing that they've done it before, and they're going to try it again. Because we know how this devil operates, and nothing new is under the sun. Okay. All right? My, I'm going to finish up this precept, and I know you got yours too. But um, this is Daniel chapter 8, verse 24. I'm sorry, 25. And through his policy, also he shall craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes and shall be broken without hand. Right. You'll break it down. Con, yeah, man. So the first part of that verse, you know, of course, talking about the policies that he set up, the laws, which he continually, he continues to change. Okay. And it, it, it shows it made anything legal for a period of 12 hours. Okay. You can't just change the laws like that. You can't just change ordinances like that. That goes to show you that this land really is lawless when... You can and when he can just change the laws at, at whim, and it also goes to show you that he's the one in control, okay? Because nobody had to say so. Oh no, I don't want the purge going. You had protesters at the beginning of the movie, pr people protesting against it. You see, and which goes to show you that there was opposition uh, um, regarding that decision. All right, but uh, ultimately the people have no say so. All right. I, I got some quick ones, really quick, just off topics you just said, really quick. Mm -hmm. The first one is in their quick ones, really quick. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Mm -hmm. And how does he do that? He does that through his policy. When you go into the word policy, that's where the word police comes from. Mm -hmm. And they use their laws to police the world, namely here in America, but they also stretch forth throughout the four corners of the earth. And that's what Esau has been known for doing. Okay? And that's how he was able to, that's how Antiochus also came into Jerusalem. He took our land over and enforced his policy upon us. Okay? And that's what Esau plans on doing again, because we know Jerusalem's a people before it's a place. And you had made the statement in regards to Staten Island, and that's what they practiced and experimented at. And they pretty much had set up their ways to do this and gave Jake an ultimatum on what to do while this happens. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it says, and he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, which we know the saints are Israelites when you read it in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Okay. And think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times in the dividing of time. And that scripture speaks for itself because it says he shall he shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and also he shall change times and laws. Okay, and when you go into that purge movie, what did they say? Oh, instead of this right here, y'all have a time where y'all can just kill everybody off, and all the laws don't matter. Right. He changed that, and ultimately, he's saying you can commit murder. And what does the scripture say when you go into the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not kill, right? Right. And Esau wants to be the main one that wants to declare the statutes of the Most High. Because even when you go into the judicial system, when you're, um, when you're being prosecuted, whatever it is, they make you swear on the Bible. And they say when this country was developed, this country was developed off of the principles of the Bible. And you see them going against it constantly. Right. So it shows that they have power to be able to change certain things. Not saying they're changing the Bible because they can't do that. Right. But with them saying that they're going to follow these ways... And they don't do it. They're changing whatever they want to do because they're hypocritical. The right. hypocritical nation that the scriptures talk about. Right. And then my second precept I want to bring out, because in Daniel 8, 25, it said, and by peace shall destroy many. First Thessalonians 5 and 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. 
we brought up the example of the purge where they'll say, oh, we're going to reward you with this. Everything's going to be okay. This is going to be a one-time thing, and we're going to see how it goes, knowing dang well what the true agenda actually is. The true agenda is to destroy us. And we've always known that because Esau's been like that. The prophecies talk about that, that that's how he is. And it's been numerous accounts in history that Esau's tried to make a treaty with us, an agreement with us, and he goes clearly against it. All right, so when they say peace and safety, that's when you know sudden destruction is coming. Right. And that's what Esau has constantly been saying more and more and more throughout these past few years. And you see all the destruction taking place, and it's going to climax to another level, which we haven't experienced yet. You got it, brother. Uh, I just I was just looking at this article that uh, that we were that we were reading before, um, and this is a. Uh, this is just an article based off of uh, off of the movie, you know, somebody's, uh, you know, interpretation of it from, uh, what is this? This is off of, I just Googled uh, NFFA Purge, and I think this is on 2fab.com. But anyway, uh, if you read it, let me see. Hold on, I just lost it. Okay. Yeah, so let me scroll down here. Actions, ideology. Yeah, end of it. You got it. No, it's a lot. No, you good, brother. Damn, I just had it, and I went back. It's just Satan. Yeah, I saw that. It's just Satan. I think it was under ideology. But anyway, uh, it's basically like when you when you watch the movie, man. You know, uh, uh, obviously that they you can tell that the NFFA lied, you know, to the masses. Okay, because they told the people that they was gonna get paid. You know, after uh, after uh, uh, surviving the, the night of the purge, but at the end of the day, they ended up sending mercenaries into the into the uh, into the the Staten Island area in order to kill off people because they they saw that Jake wasn't killing each other. Mm -hmm. All right, because their ultimate goal was to get them to kill each other, which goes back to population control. Right, right, you know, right. and when you have population control, that they they basically get rid of the undesirables. Okay, which goes to show you that Esau is a devil because he seen he deems us the Israelites, which are the chosen people of the Most High, as undesirables. Okay, when really he's the undesirable, he's the virus of the earth. Mm -hmm. But he uses examples of uh, how you know uh, the the country is overpopulated. Uh, uh, you know, he was uh, when he was the one uh, who came over here, man, from Europe and 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 started uh, uh, purging our our people, man, from out of the land. Okay, we opened him. We we welcomed him with open arms, and he and he uh, backstabbed us. So th this is why he doesn't want us to know that, that we're Israelites and that he's an Edomite, because through uh, uh, history we understand that during the time of the uh, Maccabees, during the time of uh, of, uh, of of the Romans, during the time of uh, of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the founding, the so-called founding fathers of America, and during this time, man, Esau has done nothing but betray. Uh, his uh, all of his treaties that he's made, okay, and uh, what else was I gonna say? Um, you know, he complains about how much crime and unemployment there was at that time, and that was the reason why he did why he convinced the purge, which was uh, like I said, it was a it was a, a population control agenda. Uh, the reason why he did that, like I said, because he, he he basically put our people in a position to where they can't get uh, employment uh, uh, jobs because he pumps drugs into the system. Okay, he uh, continues to lock up the uh, the mail. Okay, all of this stuff goes into uh, into uh, uh, racism, institutional racism, man. Okay, that's right. If I if I can land back to, you know, when you see these things that Esau's talking about, trying to put us through, you know, attempting to put us through population control, and when again mention the Georgia Guidestones and how they intend on it, what they want to do deep down is, of course, they understand who they are as people. All right, these elites and all that, they understand. They know they're Edomites, and they boast about it within their names. You have the Rothschilds, which actually means to be Roth, means to be red. You know what I'm saying? And child means, like, you know, shield, red shield. All right, so they throw certain indicators to show you that they're actually the true red man in the scriptures. But with that being the case, with them knowing what they want to do is they want to cut off the nation of Israel. Okay, okay pursuant to Psalms 83rd chapter. Okay, because they know the prophecy that it that has to be fulfilled, which shows you that their pride has blinded them. But the prophecy that has been fulfilled is you shall be scattered. I'm not scattered. Well, scattered, but not. that's not what I'm talking about. But you shall be um, as the sands of the sea and as the stars in heaven. And what Esau is trying to do, it, he's trying to cut that out so he can rule longer. You know what I'm saying? And you see him pushing that action of controlling the population and actually cutting it off. And as the scriptures talk about in Job, the 20th chapter, 
you know, when he shall be full of his sufficiency, pretty much then shall then sh pretty much loosely paraphrasing when he's full of sufficiency, then shall everything fall upon his own head. Mm -hmm. So as in the process of trying to execute his population control, that's when everything's going to fall into shambles because the prophecy has to be fulfilled about us being scattered. Not scattered. I'm sorry, I keep saying that, but as it's being multiplied right. and being as the stars of the, the stars of the sky and the sands of the sea. You know what I'm saying? Esau's trying to stop that. He's trying to prevent that within his hardest. And that's his agenda. That's what he wants to do. That's what he wanted to do from the beginning when he made that promise. Matter of fact, I pulled that up really quick okay. and then we can jump back. And that's the spirit. Because right when I flipped it, it went right to what I was going to pull out. Okay. So the spirit wants this to come out. Okay. So this is Genesis. That's the, man, that's the spirit, man. Hmm. This is Genesis chapter 27. Verse, um, for, I'm going to start at verse... I'm going to start at verse 38, and this goes into Jacob and Esau when, when Jacob received the blessing, okay? And how Esau was wroth after that. But it says, And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. And what does that mean? That means to have dominant rulership on the planet earth. And that goes into Job 9 and 24. Mm -hmm. The earth is given to the hands of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. Yeah. If not, where and who is he? Yeah. Okay, he was given the fatness of the earth, which cuts a lot of these Christians when he try to tell certain people this, and they'll be like, no, God has control of the earth. Of course. Right. You know, the heaven is thrown is the heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. But when you read it in Daniel 4 and 17, it clearly talks about how he has power to give the earth to whoever he wants, even the bases of men. Okay, and he gave the basis of men power right now because Esau is the base man. Okay. How do we know that? Job 30. Now I'm going to continue. It says, in the dew of heaven from above, and by the sword shall thou live. So that's this devil's lifestyle. And that's an indicator to show who this devil is because when you look at his rap sheet, when you look at his motive operandum, he's done nothing but go across the planet Earth, rape, robbing, and murdering people and setting up his policies that we read about in Daniel the 8th chapter. And he's been doing that for eons, okay? And it says, and, and thou shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off of thy neck. And we know that time is coming soon. That's why this devil is trying to crack down the way he is because when you read it in Revelation 20, it says after that, after that thousand year period, he shall, he shall rule for a short season that he, because he knows that his time is at an end, Okay. So their spirit deep down knows that it's going to end, but they're still trying to push it mm -hmm. because prophecy has to push forth that they believe that their houses shall go on forever. Okay? But this is a key point in verse 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing. So it clearly tells us why he hated Jacob. The reason why he's hating us, the reason why he's doing these things to us, the reason why he wants to purge us out and kill us off. One, of course, we know it's because he feels like the world is overpopulated, but he knows that it, the way that we're multiplying is at a rapid rate. Mm -hmm. Just like how Pharaoh felt the same exact way when you read it in Genesis, right? When you read it in Genesis, after the old Pharaoh was, was killed, the Pharaoh that rose up after him saw the way we were multiplying in the land of Egypt after we were given the land of, um, uh, I believe it was the land of Gershon, you know what I'm saying, or Goshen. Mm -hmm. The land of Goshen, when we had our dwelling, the way we was multiplying. So Pharaoh was like, man, we got we to gotta control these people. Mm -hmm. You know, and Esau is the modern day Pharaoh right now. So he has that same exact energy to him that ancient Pharaoh had in ancient Egypt. Only difference is this is newer Egypt. Okay. But it's talking about he hated Esau because of the blessing. All right. And part of the blessing was that our seed was going to multiply and be as the sands of the sea and the stars of heaven. And we were going to rule the earth within righteousness. Okay. Okay. So it says he hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will slay my brother Jacob. All right. So when all this thing, when all this stuff starts coming to pass, when martial law is pushed out in these streets, whenever they do these things. And we've seen the example of it on the Purge movie, how when you watch it, these Edomites were plotting and they wanted to experiment it in a poor in, in, in a poor po uh, poverty uh, land with nothing but black and brown people. We understand why they did that. Right. Okay. That's because of that perpetual hatred that he had since the beginning of time because of the blessing. Right. Okay. You got it out. Yeah. I found this uh, article, you know, um, 
that I was looking for earlier. And this is 2Fab. 2Fab.com is not like a super uh, reputable site. It's uh, partnered with TMZ. So it's just a, you know, it's just a site, a website. But there was part of this that stood out to me. So I'm going to read it. Uh, it says, it's not a secret that governments often lie. However, the lengths of deception the NFFA is willing to go to is absolutely appalling. And the reason why, you know, this, this I perceive that this purge is, is you know, a little bit more uh, controversial than the others is because they actually go in depth and right. how corrupt the government is. I'm going to keep reading. It says, since the majority of citizens of the citizens of Staten Island aren't desperate to kill each other and the success of the experiment is of the utmost important. So to rephrase that, Esau deemed the success of the experiment more important than the lives of those who are to participate who were participating uh in the purge right so it says um the nffa decides to unleash groups of former mercenaries wearing ku klux klan robes racist masks and nazi uniforms to attack the city and kill people what does that sound like man that sounds a hell of a lot like martial law to me Okay, which is what is gonna this what what this place is gonna lead to, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, did you have a precept? Bro? I sure do. Bro. Oh, oh sure, go ahead. This is Isaiah chapter ten. I'm gonna start at verse one, but I'm gonna jump down. Woe unto them that decree <laughs> unrighteous decrees. Can you read the beginning of that article that you read one more time? Con. Baba Kasha. Con. This is where it says the government lies. It it's not a secret that governments often lie. Okay, it's not a secret that governments often often lie, mm -hmm. and within their lies they'll say one thing. But then the thing that they say, they'll completely go against it and and then do the exact opposite, mm -hmm. which is a lie. Mm -hmm. OK, and a lot of these lies, again, he does do his policies, mm -hmm. all right, which are decrees as well. Different laws that he passes, he'll set this law up and say, oh, never mind, we're not going to do this. We're going to go this way. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's not a surprise that governments lie. Right. Well, unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. And you can break it down while I'm okay. reading okay. in um, in that right uh, grievousness, which they have prescribed. To turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. Right, man. Because when you watch that movie, those mercenaries went up into the people. They went into the areas where the most people were to kill them, man. All right. So for people who were seeking refuge, they went to the churches. All right. The, the mercenaries who Esau set up went to the churches and they just laid they laid them down man okay people who was having them damn block parties laid them jakes down so they basically used that uh 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 that uh experiment as uh as a way to to get at uh our people man okay and they they just made it the they made the land lawless they made basically made martial law legal for a specific amount of time right. to get rid of some people man right. And they were all Israelite. It wasn't no Edomite neighborhood that they were doing it at. It wasn't no Jakes that was killing Edomites from the from the government. It was Edomites killing Jakes. Those are race wars. Exactly. You know. Exactly. And 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 those people who were being killed, they they were um they were pretty much helpless. They didn't have no weapons really to defend themselves like that, mm -hmm. except for the weapons that Esau planted in the in the uh, in the hood anyway. That's okay. Right. Well, again, it says to take away, like you said, you just said it, mm -hmm. to take away the right from the poor and my people that widows may be the prey and that they may rob the fatherless. Right. You know, they were, they were the prey. When you go into a prey, you have a predator mm -hmm. that takes down the prey. Right. You know, and Esau right now, since he's been given the sword to rule, he's playing that role as the predator. And we're the fatherless. We're the widows that the scripture is talking about, our mothers and our fathers, mm -hmm. pursuing to Lamentations chapter five, verse three. You know what I'm saying? But when you go down, because again, like you were going into, you were making beautiful points talking about how he's using Esau to come against Jake. Mm -hmm. Best believe after all this stuff happens, the Lord's recording all these things because this movie has to play out. But best believe this isn't going to just happen forever. And his sins are going to stack all the way up to the point where Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai sends his judgment to these Edomites for all the different lies that they've done, all the different ways that they've, able to, they've been able to change the laws, all the different contradictions and how they've been hypocritical to what they said they was going to do and how they said they were going to rule the people. All right. And with that being the case, I'm going to jump down to verse five. OK, it says, oh, Assyrian, the rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand and my indignation. Now, we know Isaiah was prophesying in the in the presbyter or middle middle time of the fall of the Assyrian Empire and the rise of the Babylonian Empire. But when he's going into oh, the Assyrian, 
you look at it right now, and that's pretty much talking about Esau, man. Because mm -hmm. Esau has different code names in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you read it, it talks about the Assyrian. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, as a footnote, when you read it according to the spirit. Right. It goes for a lot of these guys to try to say, oh, no, it's not talking about that. Like ITR, the Good Samaritans, they'll try to say, oh, no, that's what it's talking about. But when you look at it through the spirit of the Bible, we understand that it's talking about modern times because this is prophecy. Right. Okay? So when it says Assyrian, it's talking about Esau. Okay? In this modern time. Verse 6. I will send him against an hypocritical nation. And against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. Mm. Okay? Who's the hypocritical nation? You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, we know when you go into it, you know, Jake was a hypocritical nation at a point of time mm -hmm. because the law, statutes, commandments was given unto Jake. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the Lord had used Esau as a sword to take us down. But also, too, we know the Assyrian, these Edomites to be the ultimate hypocritical nation mm -hmm. because they go against everything that they say. You know, and the Lord is going to send his right hand to come back against Jake, man. Right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Against Edom. Right. You know what I'm saying? For he had destroyed the apple of the Lord's eye. You know what I'm saying? So ultimately, we know the Assyrian to be the Edomites. And when it talks about the people, I write um, Salaki, uh, the hypocritical nation against the people of my wrath. We know Esau ultimately is destined for wrath and destruction. Mm -hmm. Okay? We were destined for wrath and destruction at a short period of time because of the curses. But the perpetual wrath and perpetual destruction Ooh. that's prophesied and promised to is the nation of Edom. Mm -hmm. And we see why. You got it, brother. God. I was going to make a point uh, regarding how Esau is hypocritical, and I was going to bring out a precept. So in the movie, uh, when they were interviewing the, the people who are going to be participating in the purge, they um, uh, there was one lady who asked, okay, so as long as I stay on the island I'll, and, and I survive the night, I'm good. I'll get the 5000 mm -hmm. And Esau was like, yeah, you'll get it. She was like, well, how are you, you going to know that I stay on the island? Okay, and this is another thing that they didn't have to put in the movie, but they put it in there because we're in those times where he said, well, we're going to get an implant in your mm. arm. Okay, and when you get an implant, that implant was a tracking device. Now, it could have been, they could have made it a bracelet. They could have made it, you know, a, 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 a hat or something on your, on your, a piece of clothing that you wear, but they made it an implant. Okay, and that implant was a tracking device. To let you to let them know that, that they stayed on the island, but really the hypocritical part was they really actually uh, chipped them in order to know uh, in order to, to 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 get to know their location so that uh, Esau could send his mercenaries in there and kill them, okay? Mm -hmm. Because that's how they were finding where everybody was at. Because Staten Island is not like a super duper small spot, you know. And on top of that, they had the contacts, okay? Esau gave them contacts so that every everybody could record. Um, their, uh, uh, you know, the, the deeds that they were doing, or so the Esau could see the deeds that they were doing, man. All of this goes into his technology, how he's wiser than Daniel to basically perpetuate wickedness. Right. Okay. And I, I know you got a preacher. No, I was, go was going to read this one yeah. real quick. It's Malachi chapter one. Uh, I'm going to read verse three and four. It says, verse three, and I hated Esau. And this is part of the reason why the Most High hates Esau because he's a hypocrite, he's a liar, he's carnal, he's not spiritual at all. He says, and I hated Esau and laid his mountains, which is uh, resembling of his governments because the brother was going into. This is the reason why the Most High is going to tear down Esau because of his uh, hypocrisy and his, and his wicked deeds. Uh, I laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. OK, meaning uh, when America is destroyed, there's going to be nothing but uh, salamanders and, and, uh, and owls and stuff like that inheriting this, inheriting this, this actual land. It's gonna be like a huge desert. Right. Just just for just for um you know edification sake, what's your you're right, Re Revelation 18 mm -hmm. does talk about how that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. But when you technically go into this in Malachi, that goes to how the first time after Edom Edom was destroyed, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Well, when they were put in captivity and we had sent them to the Caucasus Mountains, when we rule rule when we rule Europe for a thousand years, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And it goes into pretty much how his heritage was is, is laid waste. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you really go into the origins of it, but the brother's not wrong when it talks about how it's going to be for dragons and all that, because you can read that in Revelation 18. You know what I'm saying? But we know first and foremost, uh, ultimately, that goes to when we first had taken Edom away. And that's why he's coming back now with that vengeance in his heart even more so, because we ruled Rome, we ruled Europe in general for a thousand years. And he's coming back within that short season being let loose. 
within that anger. Come. You know what I'm saying? Just for you know, just for edification for the for the audience's sake. Come the water. A lot of bar, brother. Uh, verse four. It says, "Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate, uh, the desolate places, which is beautiful because it goes into the uh, the places from the previous kingdoms." Exactly. You know? It says, "We shall return and build the desolate places." They're gonna come back and try it again. Right. You right. know, God. You know, ancient Rome. That's what we call it. That's why I call it Babylon, uh, uh, the daughter of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's because right. this is a, this is the the following. Uh, uh, kingdom after uh, the, the Babylonian Empire. That's right. Okay, even though there was empires in between that, this, Esau took the Babylonian gods and made it made it his gods. Right, right, okay, right. and took those ideologies and so forth, and and, and and basically made it a remix. Okay, and said uh, it says in verse four, "Thus saith Yahweh of hosts: They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness." And the people against whom Yahweh hath indignation forever. Mm. So the reason why Yahweh Bashim Yashai uh, is going to continually destroy Esau's kingdoms until he's no more is because he has that, the Most High has that hatred towards Esau because Esau has that hatred towards the Most High. Right. And so that's why Esau puts so much hell on the Lord's people because he's basically jealous, man. You know? And so he's gonna, he's gonna, uh, like, like he brought out, uh, bless me, even me, also, my father. Esau wants to get that blessing too. Right. Okay. But like, like you said, also, he knows he has but a short time, so he's gonna basically try to institute that, uh, that rulership as best as he can until the Most High comes back and destroys him. Okay. That's right. You gotta go. Con, con. Now, even though when you went into the the points of the movie where they had actually implemented the chip in them, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's part of the scriptures. Right. That's what the Bible talks about. Right. And it goes to show you out of all the other Israelite camps, you know they watched the movie. You know what I'm saying? I wonder how they felt right. when they seen it. They probably like, oh yeah, whatever. We know that's not gonna happen. T he 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 he. Right. Really, Esau like nigga. This is what I'm about to do. Yeah. Been talking about that. The chip is real. Mm -hmm. And it's like that's how it shows you like these guys are under a strong delusion because Esau clearly tells you what he plans on doing. And when he implements that chip, when he puts that inside of you, it's going to have multiple purposes. But mainly, it's a covenant that he's going to make with you, an agreement that he's going to make with you to show forth that he is your God. Like, he's trying to do what the Heavenly Father is going to do to the righteous, going to do to the elect. Right. Put the laws, statutes, and commandments in our inward parts. Ultimately, he's going to do that to the whole nation of Israel. You know, starting with the elect, after we get out of those chariots, Lord, when we those men, we're going to have that inside of us. But what Esau is doing, because again, he's operating off of his own blessing. Right. He's envious that we have the eternal blessing that was given to the Father, that was given to us from the Father. Okay? So he's gonna do it in a synthetic way. And we go into this all the time. That he's gonna put this, try to put this chip. Well, he's gonna put the chip. He's gonna implement that. Mm -hmm. But he's gonna try to put it amongst everybody. And that way it shows that you're his property. And with you being his property and him putting that inside of you, we know it's going to have a bunch of different functions. You're going to be able to pay certain things with it. You know what I mean? You're not going to be able to use your card money no more. Everything's going to be in that chip. But also, too, it's going to be meant to keep tabs on you and track you right. to see wherever you're going. You know what I'm saying? Because once you put that chip inside of you, you're pretty much saying, I am your property. Yep. You are my God. This is my covenant that I'm making with you right. because of the jealousy he has toward Jake. So he's done doing his own thing because what? He's the God of this world, pursuing the second Corinthians four and four. So I'm going to pull this up here in Revelation, the 13th chapter, and I'm, I'm going to go straight to the point. And he calls us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. OK, now when you go into that, it says all. So this is something that's going to be pushed on a macroscopic level. Okay, now of course we know how it's gonna it's gonna start a certain way, and we see them pushing it little ways here and there. It's actually certain people that have the chip, mm -hmm. and they're starting to make it mandatory in certain branches of the military, God. certain people with their jobs. They're getting the chip, and it's out there. And they're also putting it in the movies. But what they're doing is they're starting something, and they're putting the idea of the chip out there, right. so they can make everybody else comfortable from getting it, so they'll be familiar with it. That's the witchcraft of Esau. So we understand that that's going to take place, okay? And they're putting it in that movie, all right? Now I'm going to jump to Revelation the 14th. Hold on, let me see if there's more. Yeah, verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that have the mark, which we know to be the RFID chip. When you go into that word mark, it means charisma. 
and we know that to mean an incision. That's right. Okay? That's right. An incision. All right? Now, when you go, it says, um, And no man might buy or sell, save he that hath the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Okay? Now, I'm going to jump to Revelation, the 14th chapter. And I'm going to start at verse, let's see here. I want to start at verse... 10, 10 yes, verse 9, 10, that's pretty much. Wanted to find a good spot. Yeah. But yeah, I will um I'll start at verse I'll start at verse 9. It says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, and what is that beast? Worshiping the beast, okay? That goes into worshiping the image of the beast. Alright, a lot of people get this confused. A lot of different camps out here get confused because they'll tell you that that mark of the beast is either is either um, pretty much worshiping. It's an, they'll say it's an embargo, or they'll say it's following the doctrines or the idea of Christianity. Right. But you read it in Revelation the thirteenth chapter, and it clearly tells you if any man receiveth the mark, you pretty much you pretty much given to destruction. I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to buy nor sell, right. and all of that. So if that's the case, if we had that mark, we was buying and selling like a motherfucker. When we was under that doctrine. So what's going on with that? And as we continue to read, it's going to give you the repercussion. And it's going to give you the judgment, the decision that the Lord is, is going to make for those that actually take this. And the, the decision is very severe. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in this image. Okay? So worshiping the beast goes into following the ideologies that this beast system pushes. Okay, the Catholic Church, all of that stuff goes into that. It's hand in hand. That's the image of the beast. That's why it says, Thou shalt not worship the beast, nor take his mark. When you read it early in Revelation, the thirteenth chapter, it talks about worshiping the beast, the image of the beast. All right, and when you go into the image of something, that's something that's expressed and portrayed. Okay, and that's what Esau has done. He's pushed that image throughout certain periods of times through his policy. All right. Now, of course, we know there's certain things that we have to do, but at the same time, if you're literally going against these ways of the scriptures and following the ways of these heathen out here, that's part of the image of the beast. It goes deep, okay? So when you continue, it says, and receive his mark on his forehead and in his hand. Now, check this out. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High. These guys are saying that that goes into what we used to study in, you know, the Christian church, Muslim, Islam, all that stuff. That's what they'll tell you. But, I mean, that means every, all, every single last one of us is, is pretty much destined to drink the wine of the wrath of the Most High. Right. That's the wrath we all threw. There's no way of salvation if that's the case. Who's going to be the ones that are saved? Right. We all grew up with this stuff, Come. you know? So it shows you with something bigger. It shows you what's a mark that Esau plans on putting in you. This devil plans on putting in you under his beast system. Mm -hmm. Okay, after this whole new world order comes to play, right. they're going to push this thing heavy on, again, I'm going to say it again, a macroscopic level to the point where you're not going to be able to buy nor sell or do any of these things if you have this mark. I'm sorry, if you don't have this mark, you're not going to be able to buy nor sell. Right. You're going to have to get this in you. And they push the idea of that within this movie. They said that you're going to be able to, we're going to be able to track you. All right, but that's the idea. That's what they plan on doing. It has to start from somewhere. Okay? So it says, The same shall drink from the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture, into a cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb. Okay? So that pretty much means that destruction is coming to a theater near you. Mm -hmm. If you take that shit, those thermonuclear missiles that the scriptures talk about, those arrows that shall be shot from one plant part of the earth to the other has your fucking name on it. God. If you take that chip. God. Okay? You got it, brother. God, no, nah, hey man. You know, uh, like you like you're going into the scriptures the scriptures talk about everything that this movie mentioned, man. You know, uh it talks about how Esau is uh, gonna betray uh, uh our people. It talks about how he's a control freak, okay? He's obsessed with he's obsessed with uh, uh with blood. Okay, how he doesn't, he basically, everything he does is mischief. You know, matter of fact, I actually, uh, Okay, I can read it for you if you want. Yeah, Proverbs uh, 4 and 16 is real quick. Okay. You know, because it's like every time you see a movie with government 
doing a social experiment, there's always some wickedness involved. And it's always an Edomite in power, you know, putting hell on our people. You know, so I just want to get this real quick. It's one of the first ones I thought about when I watched the movie. Con, con, this is Proverbs 4 and 16. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. Right, man. And Esau is pretty much constantly thinking of a way <laughs> to put extra hell on our people, man. He doesn't have to make it this hard, right? The reason why they call it the projects is because it really is a social experiment That's on our right. people. You know? And so, you know, he, he doesn't really, he doesn't really, he toss and turn in his bed and he wakes up with a new idea on how to put, on how to put hell on us, man. Okay. And he's, he's had a lot of, a lot of nights to where he's been able to do that. Be the fact that he's been in the power seat and he doesn't have to do any physical labor like how we do every day. We don't have much time to sit down there, sit down and, and by opportunity of leisure, come across uh, ways to uh, uh, improve, you know, uh, the way that we live. But Esau has plenty of time. Okay, and so right. you got it, bro. I'm gonna read uh, it's one more verse after this. Okay, come. This is Proverbs 4 and 17. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence, right? You know, you got it, God. Yeah, so he eating Esau eating the bread of wickedness and drinking the wine of violence, uh, bread and wine that you know that pretty much goes into your way of thinking, your philosophy. Wine goes into philosophies, and his wine of violence, the philosophy of violence towards our people has been implemented not only in these movies but i mean across the, across america on a small scale because you got uh police brutality that's being televised uh you know you got uh you got uh these uh, uh these immigrants that are uh, that are children they don't have any uh any lawyers to represent themselves in court there's many examples of esau in real life how he's been drinking the wine of violence and implementing that upon uh upon our people because he really is drunk with his own philosophy he's he's, he's uh, uh, he's basically a, a madman putting hell on our people. That's right. You know? That's right. And if I may say, just as an example, when you eat a lot, because bread pretty much means the substance that you put in your belly. But like you said, in this sense, going into the spirit of it. Mm -hmm. All right. But when, even when in a physical sense, when you put a substance in your belly, and when you drink a lot before you go to sleep, I mean, you'll be able to go to sleep, but you won't have a sound night's sleep. When you eat a lot of meat before you go to sleep, right. you know what I'm saying? Demons be on you and stuff. Okay. You know, you have nightmares. Sometimes you'll feel like you're pressed down in your sleep, whatever the case is. That's what's going on in Esau's belly right now. That's why he has to, them demons are constantly on him, man. You know what I'm saying? Everything that he thinks about and he meditates about before he goes to sleep, he has to think about these things. He doesn't have a sound night's sleep unless he thinks to do wickedness to us, man. All right, I got a precept I want to pull up really quick. This is in Job chapter 20, and I'm going to start at verse 19. It says, because he hath oppressed and forsaken the poor. And what did we read earlier? We read it earlier in Isaiah, the 10th chapter, about um, unrighteous decrees and how they pretty much plan to take out the widow and the fatherless. You know what I'm saying? Goes to oppression of the poor. You know, and what did they do in that movie? Again, they went to, they went to Staten Island, which was a land full of poverty, where the poor was at. And, and wanted to continue their form of oppression through the form of a social experiment. Okay. It says, because he hath oppressed and hath forsaken the poor, because he hath violently taken away a house which he hath not built it. Mm. All right. And I mean, two and two equals four. We know how that's done. But for the audience who might be watching, who doesn't know what that's going into, when you look at the so-called white man and when you look at his rap sheet that was mentioned earlier, everywhere he goes, he destroys the people. He gathers intel first. OK, because Esau's a mad scientist. He learns their ways for a long period of time. He's very tedious like that. He's very studious, too. Mm -hmm. Esau is studious, and he will watch you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And once he learns that, he finds out your weaknesses. Because that's what you do. When you gather intel, you're trying to find out the weaknesses on how to take down the people from within. And he's been doing that every time he goes somewhere. When he had taken Rome for the first time, they weren't the first one that dwelt there. The Etruscans that dwelt there. You know, you had those Japhites that dwelt there. Even when he had taken Mount Seir, Esau wasn't the original inhabitants of Mount Seir. Went over there, took it down, even though that was according to his blessing, his portion. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But best believe, you have to gather intel before you take a land down. Even before we had taken, taken the Canaanites out. What did Moses say? He said, I shall send forth spies. You, Joshua, and you, Caleb, shall go out there with a few other mighty men and spy the land out so we can know what to do and know the fruit of the land. And they did that. So it's a strategy of war, God. you know what I'm saying? But Esau has done it, and he's done it. He's done it out of a, he's oppressed after he's done it, and you're gonna receive the fruits of oppression. 
Okay, the fruit, the fruits of taking the land with blood, by the by the uh, prophecy and by the law of Deuteronomy. I'm sorry, Numbers 35 and 33. But he's done that with ancient Rome. He's done that with South Africa. He's done that with different areas in Europe. And he did that when he came over here to the Americas. All right, he took a land. He he, he took a building which he built it not. He took a land which he built it not. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to continue in verse 20. Surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. Just read that in Proverbs, the Proverbs, the 14th chapter and the 17th verse where it says, for they shall eat the bread of wickedness. Four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proverbs 4 and 17. Mm -hmm. For they shall eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. So while he's eating the bread of wickedness and drinking the wine of violence, he won't feel quietness in his belly. You can't get no sound sleep once you do that. OK, those demons will constantly be on your mind constantly when that happens, man. Mm -hmm. And we know Esau to be the ultimate demon demon. Because he thrives off the spirit that's in him, which is the energy of Satan. Okay, because he's the seed of the wicked. All right. So it says, surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall he shall not save of that which he desired. There shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man look of his goods. Verse 22, this is the key point. And this goes into pretty much when he tries to fulfill his agenda. Okay. It says, in the fullness of his sufficiency. He shall be in straits, which means hardships, and every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. All right. Now, when you go into that, because it's, it'll sound confusing if you don't have understanding when you read that, because you'll think, I thought Esau was the wicked. OK, but when you go into this verse, it's pretty much talking about those race wars and how everything that he's done is going to come up on his own head by these other nations and these people. God. OK, all of them shall come upon him. Mm -hmm. And that'll even start off when these race wars and all that pop off, mm -hmm. because you've got a lot of these two third jakes. They're going to see a lot of these low-level Edomites, and they're going to try to come against them. It's going to be race wars. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately, on the ultimate scale, all these other nations are going to come against Esau, man. You know what I'm saying? It says, when he is about to fill his belly, the Most High shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain upon him while he is eating. Thermal nuclear missiles, man. In the fullness of his sufficiency, those other nations are going to press them buttons. The Lord's going to put the spirit on these other nations to press these buttons. All right. And he's even going to use other Edomites to do it in, in, in Russia, you know, because namely that's talking about what's going to happen here in America. But we know judgment is going to be set on a larger scale when this mark is pushed. Right. OK. And also, too, we know that while America is being tormented and destroyed, you know that it's going to be battles over there in the valley of um, Yahweh Shapat. Right. During the time of Amagadwan, which, which is Armageddon. OK. And also, too, when we're delivered up, Lord, going to be those men, he's going to put the spirit on us to come down in those new bodies and bind their kings with chains and nobles with fetters of iron and purge off the rebels, man. Okay. So it's a lot of things that are going to be taking place when this devil is at the fullness of his sufficiency. That's right. These scriptures have to be fulfilled and watching a movie like The Purge, all of them, namely this newest one that came out. You see Esau's agenda to the fullest. Mm -hmm. And if you're a spiritual man, and if within this thing of ours, which we're spiritual men, you exactly can see to the T. And it'll spark a fire inside of you. Mm -hmm. Like, damn, mm -hmm. this nigga finna go hard. Mm -hmm. He finna try to. Mm -hmm. You know? Got you got it, brother. Yeah, just another word on martial law. I want to get this precept in 2nd Ezra chapter 15. Gone. 2nd uh, Ezra chapter 15 and uh, 14, it says, Woe to the world. And them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. Mm. And one people shall stand up to fight against another. And swords in their hands. And this is exactly what we saw in the movie. Okay. Uh, towards the end of the movie, during the climax, you had the uh, mercenaries come in there uh, in, into those uh, apartment uh, complexes. And basically start murking Jake. Okay. And Esau was all masked up. He was all teamed up. He had, he had, uh, they had, they had, uh, the, the walkie talkies and the and the guns and the and the, and the you know and the boots and all the uh, and all the gun armor and you had that one commando Esau coming in there and guess what you had the, the Israelites busting back at Esau now did they have the weapons and artillery that Esau had no but they were fighting right and this is just a this is just a hint this is supposed to be the first purge okay and this is just a movie too this is something that we can actually imagine okay what's coming to pass according to Daniel chapter twelve is going to be like a day that no other, uh, uh, like no other, man, roughly paraphrasing, okay? But I'm going to keep reading here in verse 16. Uh, For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another, 
Oh, uh, that's what exactly what uh, Esau wants to happen, basically, man. Okay, but it's gonna see, it's gonna come, it's gonna get out of control for these Edomites, man. Okay, because yeah, the super uh, uh, elite bank families, they want blood running in the streets because that way they can make the so-called order, the new world order, out of chaos. Okay, but their uh, their uh, uh, ideas are gonna basically uh, uh, collapse, man, and fall upon themselves when Yahweh Shai returns with those chariots. Okay, it says, for there shall be a, a sedition among men and invading one another, and they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the co uh, course of their of their actions shall stand in their power. Just like how the brother brought out in uh, in Job. Okay, in the fullness of his sophisticacy, uh, uh, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. There, our people, man, and these other nations aren't going to regard the, the kings and the princes of, of these Edomites when they when they come over here, man. And these uh and these uh FEMA um I'm not FEMA but these um uh UN troops come over here, man. Okay, and they start uh, uh controlling everything. All right, I'm gonna get two more verses. It says, "A man shall desire to go into a city." And shall not be able. Why is that? Because there's going to be lockdowns on the on the, on the highways because Esau controls the highways. There's going to be lockdowns on the airports. Nothing's going to come in or come out because it's going to be a uh, uh, shut down. Okay. For because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled, and the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Okay. So these these Edomites that are dwelling, man, there's millions of Edomites in America that's dwelling peaceably and safely they got pools in their backyard they got two dogs they got a nice big fence their daughter's in college okay you know they're veterans so they're getting uh, uh they're getting monthly checks from the government every month they're living peaceably man over the uh, uh uh and and they and they took over the land of the israelites so all of these things man the most high is taking to an, and taking into account and we can uh, uh reflect back on this movie that we that we just watched by uh by um uh, connecting the dots man spiritually through the scriptures you know, calm, calm. You and that priest that you brought up pretty much talk about what's going to come upon Esau's head, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to pull this example out in Matthew, the 27th chapter, and I'm going to start at the ver I'm going to start at um, the 51st verse, and this is when Yahweh Shai was being bound up after he was sold out by that bitch ass nigga Judas, okay? And as he was being yoked up, you know what I'm saying? Pretty much, I'm going to read it and explain, okay? Because this is actually I'm just reading. It says, then said Yahweh Shai unto him, I'm sorry, verse 51, and behold, one of them which were with Yahweh Shai stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Now the one that had did that was Peter. Mm. All right, you read that account of Luke, which tells you it was Peter. Now the point of why I'm bringing this, this precept out is pursuing to the next verse. And this is what Yahweh Shai told Peter. Okay, it says, then Yahweh Shai sent unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. So when you read this and he was talking to Peter, you look at it spiritually on Genesis the 27th chapter. When we understand and we read how he said he shall rule by the sword, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And Yahweh was clearly saying if you rule by the sword, if you operate with the sword, you're going to be given by this. You're going to be taken by the sword. You know what I'm saying? So the re that's the reason why I wanted to bring this out. Even though he was talking to Peter, but it was a larger message that was being said. And that's condemning the wicked because the wicked were the ones that ruled by the sword. All right. Peter smote off a Roman's ear. Right. It was a Roman troops ear. I believe it was a Roman troops ear that he smote off. I don't think it was one of ours. You know what I mean? But anyway, after he did that, Yahweh Shai said, if you live by this way, you're going to die by this way. Now, you look at how Esau has been living and conducting himself. And we look at the examples of this movie that we're talking about. He's going to die the same way that he ruled the earth. That's how he's going to be destroyed. He ruled the world with the sword. They're going to die by the sword. He oppressed the poor. He's going to be oppressed because the scriptures have to be fulfilled. And you also read it in Revelation 13 and 10, where it says he, I'm, I'm just reading it real quick. And then you got it after this, brother. Uh, this is Revelation chapter 13, verse, um, let's, let's see here, verse 10. Uh, in verse 9, if a man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. Who does the, who did that? Question mark. All right. And it says, he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. When you go into the word patience, that word means to suffer. When you go into the saints, the saints are Israelites. Why are the saints patient? Why are they suffering? Because we are in captivity under our oppressors. 
And the Lord is going to return that oppression under their own heads. And what is a key way that they oppressed us? They oppressed us with the sword. Okay, so that same sword that they put upon us with the sword ultimately is a weapon of war for the for the simple. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just necessarily a sword, but it means that weapon of war, that weapon you've used to oppress the people. You're going to be oppressed the same. I'm, I, well, I don't want to say oppressed the same exact way. You know what I'm saying? But you have that sword come upon your head pretty much. Mm -hmm. You devils are going into slavery. And a lot of you devils are going to be killed off by them thermonuclear, by them thermonuclear missiles by your own leaders. Then you're going to be placed in captivity and you're going to be burnt with fire. Mm -hmm. And best believe when we have you devils in slavery, we're going to be whooping y'all ass. Some of y'all, we gonna a lot, a lot of y'all, we're going to put to death, raise y'all back up right afterwards. It's going to be a lot of things that we're going to do to y'all righteously. You know, that's done to us because the scriptures talk about that. You know, and ultimately, when you go going to kill it with a sword, you're going to be killed the same way. That's because those other nations are going to send those missiles off over here. You know what I'm saying? You rule it that way, you're going to die that same exact way. Mm. You know? You got it, brother. Okay. Um, yeah, this is uh, Ezekiel chapter 35, and this whole chapter goes into uh, Esau's punishment. I'm just going to get three verses. I can read it for you if you want. Con, can you start at verse 5? Yeah, this is Ezekiel 35 and 5. Behold, and it, it turned right to it, right when I did it again, too. You know what I'm saying? Spirit. It's a spirit. Behold, thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time of their iniquity had an end. Right, and this is going into during the time that we were in captivity under other nations. Esau basically made it worse, okay? Because the time of our iniquity had an end during that time would be the end of our captivity. And this is the same thing that's going on now. We're at the end of our captivity, and Esau is going to implement uh, even more hell on our people. Okay, so this can also be applied to today. It's, and it's talking about uh, Mount Seir, uh, verse 3, setting, or in verse 2, setting your face against Mount Seir and prophesying against it. So we know this is talking about the Edomites. But you got it, bro. No, that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, uh, well, verse six. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry about that. My bad, bro. I thought you was talking about talking and everything. Oh. I got talking. Okay. Yeah, this is um, Ezekiel 35 and verse 6. And it reads, Therefore, as I live, said the Lord, I will I will prepare unto blood. Right. And blood shall pursue thee, said the um, said thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Right, man. So the most high is going to is going to prepare Esau unto blood. Okay? Because he hasn't he hasn't refrained himself from slaying our people. He hasn't refrained himself from uh, uh from implementing destruction. Uh, and not only just uh, deliberately killing us, man, just plaguing us with sicknesses, okay, destroying the uh, the mindset of our people, man. All of these things he's done uh, is, is a transgression in the eyes of the Most High. And so even blood shall pursue him. So now he's going to be under the curses, okay? And then I just wanted to skip down to the last verse of that chapter, verse 15, and I, then... I oh, quick, just a quick one. Okay, just a quick ahead, one. Go ahead, bro. Habakkuk 2 and 12, Woe unto him that buildeth the town with blood and establish it by iniquity, Okay. Woe unto him that built up the town with blood. Destruction. Mm -hmm. So blood by blood, you shed blood, so you got to die, and your blood has to be shed. Right. Okay? This is Ezekiel 35 and 6. I'm sorry, 35 verse, and 7. Uh, just 15, you can skip down. Okay, verse 15. Yeah, kind of. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of thine house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all I do me, even all of it. And they shall know that I am Yahweh. Right. The reason why I want to skip down to this verse is because it really highlights the point that uh, uh, the brother just brought out, talking about how Esau is going to be, be, be ultimately, he's going to be done away with, man. Okay. After the thousand years of captivity in, in the kingdom, Esau is going to be no more. He's going to be a thing of the past. Okay. Simply because he, uh, he mocked and he, man, he's, he, this devil is the proudest. He's an example of pride, man. Okay. You put, a, put the Lord's people in captivity and treat them like scumbags and then think that you're just going to rule forever, man. The most I got something coming to you, you know. But that's all. That was, that was the point on that, bro. Con, con, con. Okay, okay. Cool, cool. I got a quick precept I'm going to bring out really quick. I was trying to find something. All right, this is Deuteronomy 30 and 7. And Yahweh, thy power will put all these curses upon thine enemies. And you can break it down. Con. And on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. God, man. So the Most High is going to take the curses off of us that we're experiencing right now. Okay, bondage, uh, women uh, 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 talking back against us, 
all right, not being in our children's lives, not, not being able to uh, sustain ourselves financially, constantly being sick, being plagued by demons, seeing our people destroy each other and hate one another. Those plagues and those uh, curses are going to go upon our enemies, okay, upon Esau, which is why we push this word so sincerely, okay, asking and, and, and showing our, and commit, I'm sorry, giving our bodies a living sacrifice, proving to you how Bashim Yashai that we actually want this to happen. We actually want Esau, the so-called white man, yeah, including your boss, mm -hmm. okay, including uh, the, the president of the United States. That's why we're enemies of the state. You see, right. Esau right. has Esau has us on the on uh, Esau has this red beam on us, mm -hmm. okay. During during martial law, he's gonna try to go for us, mm -hmm. okay, because we're the ones who are inciting the people, okay. Uh, right. This all this word has always been controversial, uh, uh, okay. And, and this message is specifically for our people. So not only is it, uh, is it uh, uh, basically uh, singling us out as people who are specifically against the United States, which a majority of our people, not, not, not just in the United States, Edomite supremacy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to say it like that. Okay, because the majority of our people are too afraid of what Esau, the so-called white man, can do. But what does the scripture say? The scripture says, fear not him that can kill the body, but fear him that can kill the body and soul in hell. Okay, going into how the Most High is the one who kills and makes alive. He's the one who puts you in a position of uh, of pure um, uh, punishment. Okay, or he can raise you up. Okay, but that's why we stand so stiffly for this word, man, and for Yahweh Bashim Yashah, because we know that all things are possible for those uh, who actually believe in the Lord. That's right. You know? God, brother. I'm done. Yeah, God, God, bro. You know, so, I mean, like I said, we just wanted to kind of go into an impromptu lesson on the on the on the movie the purge you know you brothers can watch it you know as uh, you know apostle kabar mentioned it in his video earlier today that is definitely a, a movie that that will be edifying mm -hmm. you know um so you know abaratzada's lesson was edifying and uh you know uh, lord willing um you know your brothers got you know better understanding with it so with that mm -hmm. uh, we're going to give all praises honor and glory unto yahweh Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to the elect of the nation of Israel. Shalom. Shalom.